Yes, thank you everyone and welcome once again to art um, with this wonderful year of the dragon, very colorful, very energizing um, and in celebration of the new, the new year coming ahead. So um, we're just gonna get started with a couple supplies. Right now I have some watercolor paper handy. I have a pencil ready for our sketch. I have an assortment of watercolors here as well as several sizes in watercolor brushes. These are also good for acrylics as well, but you have this round quarter inch brush and we have a thinner liner brush and a smaller angled liner brush. So those are the three brushes that I'll be using today. Of course, a cup of water, and you should have a paper towel handy for any kind of spills or cleanups. And of course, for the secondary layer of our picture, this is gonna be more of like a mixed media. I have some colored um, markers here. This is the Copic brand in red, yellow, and orange, but you can use any brand that you have on hand. Of course, colored pencils. Um, can be used to kind of highlight as well. And we're gonna get started with our sketch. So I'm gonna jump um, a little bit close up here because the details are a little hard to see from far away. So we're gonna get started sketching this area here and then creating the face. And we wanna kind of gauge how far down and far to the right we want to get our picture started. So I'm just gonna take my hand here, place my full palm to one side and kind of give myself a little starting point for our, our dragon right here. So that's gonna be a little dot that I'm putting right at the tip of where my hand kind of ends. This is gonna be my starting point for the head and that's gonna be this little bump right here. It looks like two little bumps, very simple very um, easy to do. So we've got our palm, we've decided in this area where my pointer kind of ends will be my starting point. And now we're gonna slowly start sketching two little bumps. So one curved line and then another curved line. Simple as that, curved line started. And you do want this line kind of faced at an angle. So one, two, and so we have that beginning of our picture. So then next, we're going to create this shape here of the eye. So the first eye is going to just simply be a parentheses type of shape. So if you can see up close, you just wanna create a parentheses right at the bottom of those two little bumps. So we have those two little bumps. And now just carefully create a little curved line that appears like a parenthesis. And then we're gonna go down at about a finger tip length with a short stroke at an angle. So we got our two little bumps, we have the parenthesis, and then right at the end of that, I'm coming down to you at an angle, just like so. Once we hit about an inch from that parenthesis, I'm gonna come and create another rounded shape, just like so. So it's about an inch from the end of the parenthesis to here, and I'm creating a letter C. It's a little bit of a rounded shape for the nose. So now I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna focus on creating the other eye. So just to give you an example of what I mean, we've done this little bump shape here. We've created where the eye placement is going to be. We slid down and we created this little rounded part. And now we're gonna work on this side. So where this kind of curve is I'm gonna do the same kind of shape just across the way. So I'm gonna give it about an inch width and I'm gonna create a curve 
parallel to this curve that we created here. So I'm just moving it over, creating a curve just like so. And that's kind of like the eyebrow of our dragon. And right below that eyebrow, I'm going to draw a letter U to kind of create an eye shape. So we just did a curve that matches this curve. And then we did the letter U and kind of closed it off with a straight line. And now I'm going to take this line at an angle parallel to this one. And I'm going to do it the same length as this line down here. So coming down, and now I'm going to stop and create another letter C for the nostril there. And then I'm going to place a dot inside that nostril. Perfect. So now that we've created that nose part, I'm going to bring the mouth back up towards the eye here. I'm going to open it a little bit more. So with some short strokes, I'm going to stop right about where the eye begins, starting to create a mouth. And now the mouth is going to come down. So we have a line going straight up and then one coming down like so. I'm going to connect the nose with a kind of bump in the center and then straight lines. And then I'm going to have the mouth connect here. And then over to the right of where the eye is, I'm going to kind of start the jawline. So it's just a curved kind of line. And so once we have this curved line, we come down and follow that mouth around like so. And then at the bottom of these nostrils, I'm just making two little curved thing looking shapes and then connecting this area with a rounded eye like so. And then right at the base of the head here, we're going to create a big question mark to create this body. So if you see the sample here, we're going to start at the base of the jaw and create a giant question mark curve shape. So we're just going to take our time with some short strokes. And I'm pressing lightly. I'm not pressing hard at all. And I'm just thinking about a question mark and what a question mark looks like when I write. And so here I am curving around. It's really looking like a snake right now, but once we add the layers for the hair, it'll start to take shape and look more like a dragon. So we'll go ahead and at the top here, we're going to create a parallel line with some short strokes and work our way around like so. And moving through.
then generally you want to start off with a little bit thinner and gradually get a little wider and feel free to take as much time as you need to kind of get the shape looking good to you. That's why pencils have erasers. You can always fix up whatever you got going on. So right at this area here, we're going to be adding with our watercolor a lot of texture for the hair, but I'm just going to use some curves and shapes to kind of place some hair at the top of the head. So I'm just kind of creating these little curved waves at the base of the head. So using some curved, almost triangular shapes, I'm just adding some interesting texture, almost creating a little bit of the hair for the dragon. And then I just want some tufts here. And you just want to create a, a kind of wavy swoop and then just have another line following it. And I'm just going to repeat that. I'm not going to do too many in pencil. I'm going to allow the paintbrush to kind of, but I just want to get these main hairs that are atop the head to kind of have some defined shape. Again, I have this little curly one here. And I'm just tr trying to sketch these out because I want the head to have a lot of volume and shape. Just like that. And then I'm just going to curve off this one. And then we'll have three little kind of scragglers at the bottom here. two little ones off the bottom just like so and then as we start filling in with paint we'll add all these other detailed squiggle hairs with our brush so for now we have our dragon sketch and just with the simple bumps and curves and lines we have our sketch just like so so now comes the painting part so again with watercolor you want to be pretty generous with the amount of water especially for the style of background that we have here so we're going to be working a lot with these reds oranges and yellow so to start off with i'm going to take a couple swipes across my favorite yellow here so i've just wet my brush and done a couple swipes and i want to start building an amount of yellow that i can use so with those couple swipes i put some on my palette i'm just using the cover to my kit here you can use the cover to your kit if you have and now I have some pigment with just a couple swipes. And now I'm just going to keep dipping into my water and just adding some water to my color because I want my background to be a little opaque and see-through. So in order to get that same effect, I'm trying to water down my pigment as much as possible so that when I'm pulling it, I'm seeing a lot more water than color. So I like the way that that looks so far. So I'm taking my quarter inch round brush and I'm getting ready to kind of fill in my background with this very pale, very muted yellow color. And the shape that I'm placing this color is I'm pretending like this whole picture is moving in a circle. So we're creating movement by going in a curved direction just like so. And again, we don't want it to be too, too pigmented. We want the color very see-through. Here we go. Yes, so I'm just taking this, working above the head of the dragon and bringing that yellow color all the way through. 
in a curve, just like so. Just get all the way to the edge. I'm gonna take a couple more swipes of my pigment here and add it to the pool of already colored water. And I'm not too particular. I'm going over the lines that I drew because really I'm just trying to get the background and anything that we paint over it is going to show through. And again, I'm just moving in a curve. So as I'm passing the face, I'm moving that color in a curve. So if you're working with colored pencils or markers, same thing. You want to move it into a kind of curved motion because we want to give this dragon the idea that it's kind of circulating around and almost dancing because we're celebrating for the new year. And I'm bringing this color all the way to the center of my picture again, dipping my brush into a little bit of water, really doing a hefty amount of swipes across my palette, putting it back in the pool of my color here, adding some water drips, really just playing with the saturation. And I'm just going to keep working. And as I fill in this center part, I'm going to work on creating more of a circle as I fill in. So I want to see a lot of circular lines. And I'm just coming now from the palette in some circular lines. And straight from the palette into some circular lines and then just filling it in like so. And just working in a circle. Just moving that pigment up getting around that mouth. Just like so. So this is our inspiration. This is what we have so far for our background. We're really gonna start building the layers. So the left side is the majority of yellow. Now we're going to get into a touch of orange. So I have some orange here already ready to go. I'm gonna use that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and touch into a little bit of this orange on my palette just to give it a little bit of pigment and then again same as the yellow I haven't really cleaned my brush I'm just kind of going with whatever color is already here now I'm just dipping and bringing some water to this orange couple swipes I know we're just going to kind of tackle this center bit with a little bit of orange so I got a nice opaque orange going on we're just going to introduce some of that towards the center above this dragon head and I'm kind of moving it in the circle here and build this kind of movement that's happening in the center. So rounded, curved strokes of the brush and just dipping into that orange and blending with the page that's still a little bit wet from the yellow. Now we're just curving around. I'm gonna do a couple of swipes across the watercolor straight from the palette here, just to darken some areas. And then I'm just gonna blend it out like so. And that's going to be it for the orange for now. I'm going to start swiping now with this red on my palette. And doing a generous amount of palette like so.
and again watering it down making it very opaque so once i've pulled the color from my palette i'm making sure to get it ready for background duty <laughs> so we're going to come around here i want it really washy really see-through and again following the curve of the dragon i'm just bringing that color around just like so and don't worry that we have these details that we're going to create we're just going to let that area dry and then place the detail work with our liner brushes so right now don't worry about putting in any of the hair details just yet you definitely want to just work on the background because the hair will um, just go right on top once this area starts to dry. And again, I'm trying my best to create a lot of movement with my strokes. I'm going to add a little more water. Another technique that you can use for a background is you can paint the paper with just some water and add your pigment. Alrighty, so we're finishing this up. And of course, if you ever feel like you've kind of made a mistake or something happened and you need a paper towel, to blot it up, all you have to do is take your paper towel and gently press, and it will soak up anything that you think looks like a mistake. So again, always keep a paper towel handy, just in case. Water watercolors are a little forgiving that way. So now we're finishing up here and I'm gonna grab some of this orange that I already have kind of mixed up and I'm going to put in some accent kind of colors here, going into my palette, just like so. And just quickly swiping some accents there. Just to create some movement, I'm going to do a couple more swipes and pull that through the center here as well as creating some accents on the outside here. I'm just really in keeping with just the idea that this is circular kind of motion happening. And just to get a little bit of a close up of what that looks like, it's just some pigments of orange and yellow, and it's just slightly done in a circular. Motion. So it's almost like I'm drawing a circle, but just touching down on when I just want this one curve and then lifting up. Okay, so we're kind of done with this rounded quarter inch brush. We're going to turn our attention to whatever you find more comfortable to use. So I have uh, a liner brush. It's a little on the thick side. I also have this little angled brush here that kind of does the job too. So I'm going to alternate between the two. I'm going to use these for the longer kind of hairs that I'm doing. And I'm going to use the smaller angled one for the shorter hairs that are kind of around the face. So these are going to be, this is going to be more so for the, the long hairs coming around the side. And this is where we start building the layers of color. So I'm going to start with a wet brush. This is the angled liner brush that I have and I'm doing a couple swipes of this very bright bright red and I'm building that color 
So I have a pretty heavy pigmented shade going on here. And we'll start following our initial sketch. So I'm following this curve of the nose and almost just retracing my steps of sketching. This angled nose is going to get some straight lines going one right next to the other. Then we'll follow the curve of the eye. So we're painting it in that curve here. We'll follow the other curve of the eye. And I'm just going to curve the rest of these strokes for the rest of the face. So it's just a rounded C kind of shape, almost making like a parenthesis as I'm filling in for the rounded parts of the face. So we've just filled in the little nose here, worked our way straight up, just like so. The rounded corner here. Then we followed these curves and just continued with these curves filling in the face. And then we'll just pull up to the eye, just like so. Gonna dip into my color again and now fill in the jaw. And these strokes are kind of straight and angled and perfect. So that is the face filled in. We're gonna leave the mouth open. And now I'm just going over my pencil lines, following the curve of these little hairs at the base. Of our head here, so I'm just following the curve. As I filled in, we have this little part here. They almost look very horn-like in their shape. I'm going to trace over the lines of the curve. So I'm going to start where the curve happens and then just pull it down. Start where the curve happens and then pull it down. And here, same. I'm going to start where the curve is and pull it down. Start at the curve and pull it into the face. Start at the curve and pull it into the face. And those are the ones that we drew. I'm just going over it. I'll add more detail when we get to adding the details with the marker. I'm gonna then get some more pigment in here and we're gonna touch those little fangs. When I'm filling in the fangs, I'm putting my pinky down also for stability. So I'm just placing my pinky down. I'm not putting my whole hand on anything here just in case it's wet. And I'm just barely touching to fill in these thin little lines. I'm letting the bristles really kind of do the work. And then now we'll go ahead and take turns um, filling in the body line by line. So you want to start off with the sketched lines and a darker pigment. So now we're just starting to outline the body. And now's your chance to, to use your lines that you drew as a guideline. So if you think that the lines that you do are a little wonky or not perfect. You can just use your paint now to kind of recorrect or adjust the curve that you drew. Again, a couple more swipes against my palette just to make it 
a hair shade darker and just taking some short strokes to really darken this edge and give the body a little texture. Again, in the head should start off small and then as the body grows, it gets a little wider, a little bigger. So just kind of following the body and using my sketch lines as guidelines. Just taking a couple more swipes when I feel like the color isn't bright enough so i'll go back to my palette and do a couple more swipes and again just keep on filling in the edges first and then now we're going to use our quarter inch brush just to fill the body in so i'm just going to leave it wet as is come into some of this paint and then i'll try my best to fill in the body in one fail swoop so i'm trying my best to do as much as i can So I kind of don't want to stop as I'm filling in the body. I just want to have my brush wet enough that it fills in the whole thing. And don't worry that it's not perfect or there's pieces kind of missing. I almost want a trail with a line left behind. So I'm doing my, my best to fill in at one shot. I don't want too much texture. I want the body to look a little smooth. So here we are. And there we fill. Excellent. So now we have our body filled. And I'm going to come in now with a little bit more shadow. So just a little more strokes. On the inside, so just PC strokes kind of going out into the center and coming down. Lovely. So now I'm switching to the thinner liner brush. This is going to help me start making all these lovely little hair strokes. And we have just the appearance of a little bit of fiery smoke coming out of the mouth here. So here we are, we're gonna freehand a lot of these. And it just starts off with a curly end. And then just more of a flat squiggle. So as you can see, I'll start off at the body and then just carefully squiggle and curve the ends. And the hairs don't, don't grow much more than just this front part of your finger so you don't want the hairs too too long um but you definitely want some sizes happening here so i'm starting off and i'm using my pinky to kind of adjust and i'm just letting the the brush tip kind of hit the page very softly nothing crazy and i do a couple of waves so it's almost like making a little S and then curving the ends. So here we are. I'm going to start about a centimeter away and just finish it off and a little bit of a curve. And just to see that process a little bit up close, I've taken a couple swipes of my pigment just so that it's really bright twisting my brush to a little point and then using my pinky to kind of steady myself i'm doing a little wave and then a little curve a little wave and a little curve and i'm just going to keep repeating that freestyle wave and curve some can be elongated more some can curve going one way, going another way. It's really up to you how you want to see it. But the point is is kind of moving like a clock. 
So if we're starting here, the line moves out and moves out and moves out. They're not all kind of pointing up. They're kind of moving at an angle. So the next one. And just softly kind of waving, waving and bringing the curve around. If you need more pigment, just go ahead and swipe some more, twist to a point, and just kind of squiggle and curve. And squiggling curve. Definitely just keep squiggling and curving as best you can. And then as you're coming down towards this way, we're going to kind of shorten them off and then move the squiggles. And hairs towards this way on this side. Perfect. Okay, so that's just the first set of our little hair lines. We're going to come in now to the background while that dries and define the background look just a little bit more. As you can see in our example painting, these are more vibrant and darker shades. So now that the background is kind of dried, we're gonna come in with more potent kind of color and layer on. So to start off with, I'm going to be using the yellow in my palette. So I'm using that liner brush still for these details on our background. And I'm doing a couple swipes across, really trying to build up the shade and give a nice hefty color to it. So I would say a good five to seven swipes at a time. And I'm just gonna come in with my same brush on its side and pull it here. Then I'm going to move into some orange. Again, about five to seven swipes across. Really getting that in, just like so. And I'm just going over those little bit of accent lines because that first batch was a little see-through. So now I'm just coming in now with that darker pigment and really just laying on that curve to showcase that movement and getting those little looks like so. Now I'm going to turn to the center again some swipes with that liner brush still and some orange. And then just hyping the edges up like so. Really just defining these little circular areas. Going to go back into some yellow and then get a pigmented yellow in here too to kind of lay, layer over the top. And turning my brush almost on its side just to keep a pointed shape. Just going to come in here and 
literally next to the orange. Just bring in that yellow. Movement. Not being shy. Not worrying if you mix, just really getting in there. And filling in this area. So it almost looks like he's breathing out this yellow. Have my brush on its side and just kind of pulling out this yellow on the curve. Just like so. Okay, and then on the right side, we're going to come back to this pigmented area and really just pull some of that orange just to be a little more defined. Leaving my brush flat on its side to make these wider kind of brush strokes. And then I'll pull into my pigment to get a little bit more defined line here. Wonderful. Okay, now we're going to layer up so if you can see the body here, it has a couple of layers of shades of red so we're just going to use this liner brush and then just come in again without stopping and just bring a line through the body and then just move almost side by side I'm just moving with one stroke without stopping. And just building up that texture and interest when you're painting. Just by letting the layers dry and then coming in with a darker color. And you can see all the lines popping through and just making it look a little multi-dimensional. Alrighty. So I'm just going to rinse my brush off a little here and Add a little glow to my eyes. So we have these little dots that could use a little golden touch. So here we are with some yellow to really showcase that. And then I'm going to take this liner brush and jump into a little bit of purple to mix with this red because I want to fill in the mouth with a reddish color, but you want it a little bit deeper than the red that you use for the dragon, just because it's showcasing inside the mouth. So here we have this purpley red color. I'm just filling in there with that purpley red. And then again, taking that kind of purpley red color, and getting that inner part of the body. Just like 
So, ready. So the next part that we're going to be working on is that we kind of have the painted hairs. So when we're doing a kind of mixed media art, we want to definitely make sure that the painting is pretty much for the most part dry. Because if you have your page a little wet when you're trying to use markers or colored pencils, it's a little more difficult to have the picture kind of show up. So let me show you what I mean. So with our details here in the hairs, I'm gonna work on the areas where I know for sure they are definitely dry. So right now we're pretty much done with our watercolors. And now is going to be the time where we use our markers to kind of elevate um, and make it more um, detailed. And these little whips and, and kind of curly cues become more defined. So with these Copic markers, they're really great. Um, they're high quality alcohol markers made in Japan and they come with two different sides. They sell pretty decent versions on the cheap side. These are, are kind of expensive, but there's inexpensive versions too that craft stores sell. Or like I said, you can always use Crayola, whatever you have on hand, but they have these great sides. One's kind of wide, one's kind of um, brush-like, and they layer very similar to watercolors so that um, you don't want it on the paper for too, too long because it does get absorbed quickly and they layer pretty similar to um, watercolors that it leaves kind of like an opaque at first and then you can keep on building and building and building um, but sometimes if you build it too much they get these little kind of heavily um, paper kind of bits on it too so you just want to be a little careful when kind of over coloring with markers so to get started we're basically just going to retrace our steps with the beginnings of the face so I'm just going to start off with little things and give that a little bit more of a detail and then kind of create this smoke-like curve that's kind of appearing like out of the mouth here and that's kind of at the bottom of the left of the mouth and I'm using the tip, barely touching the paper with my marker. And now I'm just re retracing my drawn line. And I'm not pressing hard at all. I'm almost treating it like a brush itself. And now I'm just going over the little areas that I painted and just giving it a little more whimsy and roundedness and then just retracing this little area of the eye the original first two little bumps that were drawn the mouth going over the nose so just did these little accent pieces kind of coming out of the mouth. We have these two little lines. We got these eyes, almost eyebrows kind of defined here. Kind of get this little line and the face a little defined. And this mouth here. Just getting a little TLC with the Copic marker. And then we're just going to go over that hair as well. So again, when I'm pressing down, I'm just using that very, very, very teeny tiny little tip that you see there. And barely, barely pressing. Like I'm almost not connecting the line all the way because it's not pressing that hard. So I'm just going over all these little kind of curly cue 
kind of textured lines that I used. And going back and forth with these little hairs here. Just following my sketch lines once over. And again, just making sure that I touch the area that I'm working in so that it's still a little dry. So if it's wet, I'll just move to the next section. So now I'm just going to spend my time kind of going over these little lines, making the points a little more defined, filling in the blank or any areas that kind of don't look good. I'm just enhancing with the marker and almost just retracing my steps. And I'm not too worried that you still see some lightness and some darkness when you when you're drawing. Not a big deal. We're just doing this to define the texture a little more, give it a little interest, give it a little dimension and style. All good things in the art world. And for those who feel like they may mess up or they didn't look make it look clean enough, now's your chance to give it a nice clean finish and sharpen up any little wonky curves or shapes that you created. Give your picture a little more definition and personality. Just going through with the Copic marker like so. And coming in over here as well. And even if you're not going over and you're just adding whatever looks good to, now's your chance to kind of edit it. Wonderful. So now I have all the little hairs kind of taken care of. So now I'm just going to focus on kind of outlining the entire body. So instead of using the pointed kind of marker, I want to choose the wider side of the marker just because I want a little bit of a thicker squared line. So I'm just going to come in here and kind of work with the curve. On my sketch line to start with the outermost drawn line like so and then the innermost line and again now is the chance to fix any imperfections if you made the neck too skinny if you made the neck too big Now's your chance to mix it. Excellent. So now that we have that part done with the red, we have some of the orange, which immediately I'm going to go over this orange here with this pointed one and go over the orange here. And basically just retrace my steps with any areas that have the color already. Just like so. Getting these defined. And that's what's great. This is like a marker, but it has that paintbrush feel to it. Wonderful. And then lastly, we have this lovely yellow where I'm going to get a deeper color into the eyes here. And then again, just kind of going with the flow here, making that movement. Happen on the inside, a little on the outside, 
And then if you're lucky enough to have a marker handy in black, which I do here, this is a coping in black, you can also just take black out of your um, watercolors and use a liner brush. We are done. We are complete. So you want to go ahead and if you think that your picture is finished, you like the way you look, this was our inspiration. So this is what we had originally. This is what we created today. Pretty cool. Very fun. And representative of the new year. So happy new year of the dragon. And when you are finished with your masterpiece, sign it so that you know you're officially done. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you liked this little sketch.